Higgins Pfeiffer restricts Derbyshire in Bristol. Derbyshire will probably be preparing for another season in Division 2 next year, now 48 points adrift of Lancashire at the top of the table. Their opponents Gloucestershire, however, are still in with a chance of a long-awaited return to Division 1, and they're fighting for one of three promotion places at the top of Division 2. And with clouds rolling in over the Patternair County ground, they take the opportunity to bowl first against their hosts. And it proved to be the right decision early on. Payne finding the edge of Godelman's bat to see the Derbyshire captain out for a duck. His opening partner suffered the same fate, albeit with three runs to his name. Ryan Higgins this time with the wicket. And it was Higgins who broke the short, stubborn partnership of Lace and Madsen, bowling the latter for 21 as he began to play his shots. Derbyshire played their way past 50, ticking along at a decent rate, but with the threat of further wickets still in the air. Josh Shaw announced his return from Yorkshire with the important wicket of Lewis Deploy, caught by Bracey for 15. Higgins then removed Lace for 16, trapped LBW, the last of the top order batsmen dispatched before lunch. They'd reached the interval at 62 for 5, Gloucestershire in firm control, having exploited the conditions to their advantage. Harvey Hussain and Alex Hughes had a rebuilding task on their hands and both looked to dig in. But despite that reticent, they lost another wicket without adding much to the total. Hussain could only edge Higgins through to Hammond to depart for six. Hughes and Critchley came together to see Derbyshire edge towards 100, but they were seven down before they got there. Ben Allison trapping Critchley LBW for his first ever Gloucestershire wicket. Finn Hudson Prentice would finally provide Hughes with the partner he'd been craving. The pair came together to steer their side past 100 and confidence began to grow. When a Hudson Prentice single brought up the 150, Derbyshire looked in the game. But the next ball saw an end to the session and an end to the innings of Hughes bowled by Higgins for 39. Hudson Prentice fell shortly after the restart, Shaw finding an edge through to Roderick for his second of the day. Rampall and Van Beek would show some resilience resisting the Gloucestershire attack and looking to earn Derbyshire a valuable batting point. They just about managed it when Rampall was removed, Bracey with the catch at second slip, Derbyshire all out for 200. Dent and Bracey were the men tasked with getting the innings started in the final few overs of the day. But that peaceful start was brought to an end by Lewis Rees. Bracey caught behind for five. Roderick followed in the next over, Rampal removing the number three for a duck. That would be the extent of their losses, however, and when Stumps was called, the score was 46 for two. Gloucestershire well placed as they head into day two. No Derbyshire batsman had managed to grab the innings by the scruff of the neck, their scorecard littered with starts. Higgins had been the pick of the Gloucestershire bowlers, with figures of 5 for 45. Dent and Higgins hundreds hand Gloucestershire the advantage in Derby. No Derbyshire batsman had stood head and shoulders above their colleagues, the card littered with starts but few standout scores. It had been a day for the bowlers, Ryan Higgins Pfeiffer contributing to a somewhat restricted return from the home side. The Gloucestershire's batsmen had suffered a similar fate early in their innings, both Bracey and Roderick falling cheaply in the closing stages of day one. That meant the side from the West Country had no time to congratulate themselves for a decent fielding effort, resuming in the precarious position of 46 for two, still 154 runs behind their hosts. Hammond and Dent pushed that score past 50 as they got the second day of play started. But the partnership was broken short of the 100, Hammond edging through to Hussain as Rampal got one to rise on the Gloucestershire number four. Smith joined Dent at the crease and the pair looked to take their side past 100, Captain Dent picking up his half century in the process. They reached lunch having lost just one wicket in the morning session, the score 128 for three, trailing by 72. Derbyshire found another breakthrough as the game got back underway. Smith, the next man to fall for Gloucestershire, bowled by Critchley for 32. Charlesworth followed in the next over, only one run to his name, another wicket for Rampal. 
The wickets then dried up. Dent, now joined by Higgins, continued to find scoring opportunities as the Derbyshire bowlers toiled. They passed 150 quickly and began to close in on the home side's total as Higgins joined in the fun. It would be the Gloucestershire number seven who took his side past the Derbyshire total with a four of Hudson Prentice. The pair continued to bat well, Dent picking up his fourth century of the season with a four down to fine leg, a knock that looked like it meant a lot to him. Higgins wasn't far behind with a half century of his own. They reached T at 244 for five, a lead of 44 runs, and Gloucestershire starting to take control of the match. The momentum was with Gloucestershire as play resumed. Dent and Higgins grasped their opportunity and began to drag the side towards 300, each man finding the boundary with increasing regularity. That milestone was reached as the value of their partnership ticked over 150 runs, and Dent passed 150, with Higgins now looking for a century of his own. That would come with a single off Van Beek, the all-rounder reaching triple figures off just 129 balls. He lost his captain to the next ball though, an exceptional innings brought to an end as he edged Van Beek through to Jose. And he removed Higgins in his next over, Gloucestershire's two set batsmen dismissed as Derbyshire found some joy in the dying embers of day two. Jack Taylor and David Payne saw their side through to the close of play safely, the score 396 for seven, leading the home side by 196 runs. The highlight of the day had been the innings of captain Chris Dent and all-rounder Ryan Higgins. Derbyshire had struggled to make inroads, their batting effort looking poor in comparison to the Gloucestershire return. They'll look to take the lead past 200 in the morning of day three, before putting their host back in with a full two days of play left. Derbyshire edge ahead with Billy Godelman, 86. A real captain's knock from Chris Dent put Gloucestershire in the driving seat on day two. He and Ryan Higgins had put together a fantastic partnership, the all-rounder enterprising, his skipper watchful. Their innings had almost single-handedly provided the side with the 196-run lead they enjoyed heading into the third day of play. Jack Taylor and David Payne were the men tasked with increasing that lead as much as possible, resuming the Gloucestershire innings. They brought up the 400, full batting points secured. Taylor fell soon after, however, bowled by Lewis Rees for 17. It would prove to be a crucial spell from the Derbyshire bowler, two further wickets coming in consecutive balls. Shaw pinned LBW for four before the innings was brought to an end. Allison bowled for a duck on debut. Gloucestershire were all out for 419, the lead 219. Derbyshire had done well to restrict their opponents, the final three wickets falling for just 23 runs. Derbyshire would need a solid base if they were to hold hopes of getting a result out of the match, and much of that burden lay with Rees and Godelman, the former having already made his mark with the ball. And he would do well with the bat too, the pair batting quickly to bring up the 50 off just 11 overs. They were unscathed at lunch, 65 without loss, confidence growing in the Derbyshire ranks. They lost Reese soon after the break, out LBW for 38. But Billy Godelman looked in inspired form, defiantly finding boundaries from whatever Gloucestershire threw at him. That took him to his 50, the Gloucestershire lead now looking less imposing than at the start of play. Madsen also began to free his arms, and the pair saw their deficit drop into double figures. There was no let up from the Derbyshire pair, confidence growing with every shot. But Godelman fell, he became Allison's second wicket of his career, caught behind for 86. Madsen remained, and he picked up his half century not long after the captain's departure. And that's how he and Lace went into T, the score 188 for two, the home side trailing by just 31 runs. The restart saw Gloucestershire's bowlers continue to toil. But Wayne Madsen couldn't maintain his momentum and finally departed Allison with his second wicket of the day as the Derbyshire man picked out Dent. 
They moved into the lead with Lace chasing a 50 of his own. That came with a 6 offshore, the home side hitting their stride in the closing overs of the day. By the time play did come to an end, Derbyshire were 305 for 3, with a lead of 86 runs. They're in the driving seat going into the final day of play, with all three results still possible. Gloucestershire will have to bowl well in the morning session if they're to put themselves back into a commanding position, but this match looks like it's going to the wire. James Bracey hits 100 as Gloucestershire race to victory after Derbyshire declaration. Derbyshire had finished day three in control. They'd reached 305 for three, their lead 86 runs, and held all the cards heading into the final day of play. Tom Lace had played his way to a 50, ably supported by Deploy, the pair attacking the Gloucestershire bowlers when they were afforded the opportunity. And when the home side resumed, they picked up where they'd left off, both men proving tough to extricate. The lead swiftly moved into three figures, the partnership growing in confidence with every scoring shot. Deploy reached his half century with a boundary off Allison, the South African flicking one of his pads to reach the milestone. A few overs later, Lace was rewarded for his fine innings with a century, two runs off Smith, enough to take him to his third first class hundred at just 21 years old. The pair stuck together through to lunch, Derbyshire going into the interval at 385 for three. The morning session had been kind to the home side. Lace came out after the break and set the tone for the second session. Three boundaries scored in quick time. But he would fall in the second over after lunch, looking to slog Allison, only to nick through to Roderick for 125. When one partner of a big partnership stands, the other tends to follow soon after, and Duploy was no different, Higgins taking the catch for Smith's first wicket of the contest. Hughes and Hussein, both fresh to the crease, continued the attack as Derbyshire looked to set up a declaration. Smith picked up another wicket, Hughes bowled for 28 as he attempted a reverse sweep. Ram Paul's cameo would be brief but effective, two sixes helping Derbyshire extend their lead past 250. And that's where they declared at 481 for six, Gloucestershire needing a not impossible 262 runs to win the contest. Bracey and Dent got the Gloucestershire reply off to a good start, putting on an unbroken stand of 48 runs when tea was called. The visitors still in with the chance of pulling off an unlikely win. That victory would be dependent on their ability to score 215 runs in the final session of the day, and they seemed intent on pulling it off. Both men were seeing the ball well and batted in determined fashion, putting their foot down as they looked to take on the Derbyshire attack. The match had effectively become a T20, the visitors requiring 143 from the final 20 scheduled overs of the match. Ravi Rampal has excelled for Derbyshire in the short format this season, and he showed why, picking up the wicket of Dent, dot balls were at a premium, Derbyshire's bowlers unable to prevent the pair from scoring. Bracey reached his century, the third Gloucestershire man to do so in the match. He lost Roderick a few balls later though, that brought first inning centurion Higgins to the crease, his side now needing just 30 runs, and the all-rounder announced himself with a six off Critchley. The target dropped into single figures after another expensive over from the spinner. Fittingly, it was James Bracey who scored the winning runs, a four off the first ball of the penultimate over, taking his side over the line, Gloucestershire winning by eight wickets. They will take a lot of confidence out of the manner of their victory, with a potential promotion slot up for grabs. They've shot up the table into second place, 29 points behind runaway leaders Lancashire, but with a 14-point lead over North Ants. Oh.